Oh yes, thank you. It's just a little bit after first light and it's a beautiful morning. Um, I think the high is going to be in the 50s again today. Uh, it doesn't really feel like December honestly, but I'll take it. We're starting out with the usual rig, the diamond jig and the teaser. So let's see what we can get into and I'll catch you out there. People around me are catching fish, but I'm not seeming to get anything. Okay, I got nothing at this first spot. I am gonna try another one, and then if nothing happens at that one, uh, I'm gonna take a little break and then try and fish sunset back on LBI. So I'll catch you at the next spot. Let's see what happens. Well, I hope for the best, expected the worst, and I got the worst, didn't catch anything. So I'm gonna head back now, uh, chill a little bit, make a, another plan of attack, and then get back on the water later. So I'll catch you guys later. All right, we're back out here going for round two. I've again got the diamond jig on, but this time I added this little red gill teaser. I uh, definitely didn't put it on there, right? It was a little difficult, but it does mimic a sand eel really well. Uh, so both of these together, hopefully will catch me something. Let's see what happens. I did get some tsunami sand eels too, but they don't really cast that far. And the tide is still incoming, so it is a little low. So I want to put this diamond jig on so that I can launch it out there. All right, this is my last ditch effort for the day. I was just talking to this guy. I went to a new spot and he was on his way out. He said that there were guys down a little bit of ways catching a bunch of fish. Um, he switched to a bucktail and had some success. So I'm gonna give that a shot. And then if I don't catch anything, tomorrow's weather is supposed to be terrible, but I don't care if it's the end of the world, <laughs> I'm giving it another shot, uh, cause I'm determined. Diamond Jig is getting one last hurrah. Maybe 10, 15 more cats and then I'm calling it a night. It's getting dark out. I think I forgot my headlamp. Yes, thank you. Oh, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Oh, come on. Yes. Oh, I waited all day for this. Oh, it's a good fish too. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh man. Oh man, that's a nice fish. No, stay. I gotta measure this guy. Oh, let's go. Oh man, I waited all day for that. That fish was nothing crazy, but after working my butt off tirelessly this entire fall, it made a world of a difference catching it. And as you can tell from my excitement, I was definitely feeling on top of the world. I ended up getting this fish weighed in for the LBI Surf Fishing Classic. It was 28 and 3 quarter inches and 7 and a half pounds. So stick around, I'm going to cook this fish up later in this video. Oh. Pop off. 
right at the lift. I've missed today. Supposed to come in later today. Both angles over there. fish in the books. Number two for today. Let's get you back, bud. Okay, well I would consider that a successful morning. If you've seen how my fall run has been going, it's been not the best. So catching two fish in one session is enough to make me super happy. I recently went to Tuckerton Seaport with my family and they had a small display called Taste Traditions of South Jersey, which covered some unique foodways of the southern part of our state. I noticed this striped bass recipe and thought I should give it a try. So I'm modifying the recipe just a little bit. First I'm starting by taking the skin off these fillets and removing some of that blood. Then I lay these out on a tray, put some salt and pepper on both sides. And then I'm taking slices of applewood smoked bacon and wrapping that around the fish, but leaving some space in between. Then I'm taking some small pieces of butter and placing that between the bacon strips. The original recipe calls for regular tomatoes, but I really love sun-dried tomatoes, so I threw these on top instead. Then I'm adding my favorite, some minced garlic. Next, I'm throwing on some sliced onion rings. And then last, adding some sprigs of parsley. So I'm going to throw this sucker into the oven for about 50 minutes on 350 and then all those juices and flavors and oils are going to come together and start enhancing the flavor of the fish. All right, now it's all done. I'm going to pull it out of the oven. The original recipe calls for the full fish to be stuffed with stuffing, but instead I decided to put it on the side since I did fillets and I have cornbread stuffing here. And here's the final product. It tasted delicious. There was a lot of great flavors in this and I cooked this for my parents and they both really enjoyed it too. So it was a nice family meal. 
and I would definitely try this recipe again. So if you ever tried this Southern New Jersey recipe, let me know in the comments. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one.